All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, the last video that I took was of the Concord Blue uh, GPS 706 and I mentioned that I had another phone uh, coming in the mail. I received it today. Uh, this is a uh, Ericsson Dialogue in red and this one is yet another one from Mexico. And this one is from 1968 and they had a couple of things that I noticed on this phone when I uh, first opened it. Um, overall, it's in good shape. Uh, I think it had been in storage because it's uh, it's it's a mess, especially on the inside. It's got uh, probably a real. It's got a thick layer of dust. I had the cover off so I can show you all this time. And you can see I'm in a different environment as well. This is my little built-in desk that um, is here at my apartment in my bedroom. So I decided to clear it off and use this uh, area instead of the kitchen table, dining room table. because so I've got the other project over there. But anyway, it's in a nice red color. And I had one major observation of this phone, so I'll show you now. You'll notice that uh, we have kind of two different tones here. One's more of an orangey uh, red over here on, on, you know, on the dial bezel. And on the handset, but you notice that the housing is a more richer red color. I'm trying to figure out if this had been painted by somebody. Uh, you can kind of tell, I'm going to put it by the fluorescent light over here, or the LED light. You can kind of tell that it has a bit of a rough texture like they spray painted it. And you can see, uh, I think those are uh, fingerprints. So... I don't know. It's not a big deal because um, flipping over the housing, it's red as well, and there's no, uh, if there is, if it is painted, there's no paint on the other side. So this housing originally is red. So I don't know if they just tried to do it to make it, uh, maybe it was fading or, or whatnot. Or if this is just what Ericsson did in Mexico with their housings, they, if they painted them. Maybe it was just, uh, wasn't well done by them, I'm not sure, but you can tell it's really scratched, so I'm, I'm thinking it's um, a really poor paint job by somebody else. But it's it's really not a big deal because it's originally red on the underside. We might be able to find out because uh, if they didn't take this uh, thing off where that holds the number card and there's a different texture on the underside of this then we'll know that it was repainted by somebody else because when people repaint these phones when they do a bad job they tend to uh not take these things off and, and as well as other things but that was my only thing that i noticed the handset has not been painted it's in its original color it's more of a scarlet you know i, I got poor lighting over here but uh it's red it's more of a scarlet color orange red but it's a red type of color let me uh show you let's see ellen erickson dialogue ellen erickson erickson there on the dial center and then that's what the back looks like nothing really dif different other than that it's a red color Everything's uh, intact on this phone as well. There's nothing missing. Then we got the uh, line cord. This is original to the phone. Uh, in Mexico, they uh, equipped these telephones in the later years. This is not a later phone. This is 1968. But I guess um, when they replace when they replace the cords, they put these solid black uh, line cords in them with the RJ11 plug. So that's that. The dial is uh, a little bit slow. It's stiff on trying to wind it up. So it's gonna need a bit of work. And then we got the uh, translucent white plungers. Let's see if I can... I got the, actually, let me do this first. I'll show you the bottom of the phone. 
those markings there. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, it's, I think it's 1967. I think it's 1967, not 1968. I was reading the first number. It looks like a 68, but I think it's. I think this is 38 slash 67. So, um, 1967 Erickson dialogue. Got some. Uh, it's been regulated. And then the early uh, Erickson Dialogues in Mexico had the stamp here on the bottom that said Propiedad uh, Telefonos de Mexico S.A. The later ones had it uh, countersunk or engraved just as like this logo here. It would be somewhere in this area. So you have made in Mexico. It's nice to see that. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I don't know if I could do this, but I had some difficulty trying to get this off. It wasn't, it wasn't behaving. And it's something with the spring-loaded uh, screw here. I don't know if I'll be able to do this with uh, single hand and then it's loose. It's just... Uh, so give me a second. Thanks for bearing with me. I had to get my needle nose pliers there to get the uh, pull that screw out. I think it's an issue with the uh, spring here. So I'll have to adjust that to see what's going on so that if I need to remove it again, which I hope I don't. I see there's a little bit of a break on there. Let's hope uh, it doesn't break off. But you can see on the housing here, there's no paint on the other side. So this phone is originally red and they didn't take a gray housing or something other than red and repaint it. So that's, that's good. And, um, I might be able to remove it with uh, Novus plastic polish because if it's a really uh, poor paint job, then I might be able to remove it. If not, then I'll just uh, try to polish it and smooth it out as much as possible. But that's the housing. Then we've got the inside of the phone. You can see they did some work here. And I use work very loosely. Because, uh, yeah, these are um, poorly modified. <laughs> I think they had an issue with the restraint where it was uh, causing the line to go in and out and they shortened it to fix that issue and then they uh, kind of ripped it up like this. The seller stated that the phone didn't work so this is probably why it doesn't work. Also notice these two uh, screw terminals also missing. So I don't think they ever used those Otherwise, you would have seen some pretty gnarly looking holes there. So I think those are originally empty. I'm hoping. I'm so hoping. But I don't think they use. Or if ever you really needed a three and four. So this is, a, this is another thing I noticed upon opening up the phone. But you can see that there's a lot of uh, dust. So it must have been in a very uh, dusty environment. Or it was just uh, in storage for a really long time. Flip it over here. You can see the rest of the terminals. It doesn't have terminal eight, but I don't think it's used just like terminals three and four. But everything is intact, thank goodness. Here's the bell, brass bells. Uh, we'll have a good time uh, polishing those up with Brasso, or my Wright's uh, brass polish. I have Brasso as well. There's the switch, the hook switch, the switch hook, I mean. And there's the switch there. You can see 
see everything with the capacitors. It's a 250 volt made in Mexico. Then you got in the center of the induction coil. And then you have a couple more capacitors. You got some resistors in there as well. I think those are resistors. I don't really know. I kind of know the technicalities of telephones to an extent. But. That's the dial again. Yeah. Let me uh, go ahead and open up the handset here and show you the uh, elements. So we've got the. I think this was painted by Ericsson because I think they even painted the caps as well. But you can see it's really rough, so it must have been somewhere where there was a lot of chemicals and it broke down the paint. I'm seriously thinking that's what it is. You can see here. There's no other markings on that, but that's what that looks like. I think my green Ericsson dialogue is the same way. There we go. Where it was painted. Same thing with my one from Ecuador. So I think that was a common thing down there to do. Maybe it was the type of environment that they were used in. I'm not sure. But there's the uh, transmitter. It's got a bit of rust on it. This one doesn't use contacts because it's got uh, terminals on it. If you give me one more minute again, I'll be able to show you the dial. Give me a second. All right, got the dial off. That was a little bit of a struggle. Okay, so we can see uh, before we look at the dial, there's a look above the uh, induction coil and all the other capacitors. It is an absolute mess. All right, moving on to the dial. This one definitely has an older type gear here. It's not the plastic one. And this one, there's various markings on there. Plastic there. It's not clear plastic like uh, other Ericsson dialogues have. In fact, my ivory one has this type as well. I think I have one that has black plastic as well. This one, it's an Ericsson dial, but usually they have the lo their logo on it, but they don't. Let me show you the dial working here. one-handedly it's not easy I got it at zero so yeah it's gonna need an oiling I don't know if the uh, oil just got gummed up because it feels stiff but it's definitely gonna need a, a good cleaning but yeah so that's the 1967 red Ericsson dialogue and this is going to be yet another fun project to do I'm not being sarcastic this time, you know, fun, oh great, you know, we have all this stuff to do. But, it's going to be something to keep me busy while I'm home. Until I go back to work the next day. Anyway, so yeah, um, of course I showed you the inside of the telephone here. So I, of course, won't show you any pictures at the end because you saw all the things I showed you. Including the dial, the workings of the phone on the inside, the capacitors, induction coil, bell, even the underside of the housing, and the inside of the handset. 
and of course the, the um, possible poor texture of the paint on the outside of the housing uh, of the uh, telephone. So yeah, that's the uh, first look of the uh, 1967 Ericsson Dialog from Mexico, and you can see it's now in pieces. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this first look video, yet another one, and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.